Okay, year 10, we're about to move on to formulas, which is the last bit of work for this week. Before we do that, I neglected to do one question from the last exercise, which was question eight. So I'm gonna quickly go over it. Um, it's actually easier than question seven. So there are only two there. So if you did them, that's great. Pass forward to the next bit. If you didn't, here we go. So when we do question eight, and these are equations with fractions and we've got x on 3 plus 1 equals 5. So in our solving equations, remember we're trying to get rid of all the things that are with or near the x. So I'm going to get rid of that 1 and I'm going to get rid of that 3. But which one do I get rid of first? So in this case, try and think, all right, I've got to get rid of the thing furthest away. Now, it wouldn't actually matter what you did first. You could multiply by that 3 to get rid of it or minus that 1. But you, if you multiply by that 3, you're gonna, you could get in a bit of trouble. So the best thing to do is to get rid of that 1 first. And how do I get rid of that? I minus 1. So I minus the 1 and I minus the 1. And I've got the x on 3 equals 4. Now, how do I get rid of that 3? I multiply And I get x equals 12. You could have done it the other way, but it would have been difficult because you would have had to multiply both the 1 and the 5 by 3. So in all of these cases, get rid of the number furthest away first. So I'm now going to move on to D. See if you can do it before me. And we've got 5 equals 3x on 4 minus 2. Well, this is going to be a three-step. I have to get rid of that 2, the 4, and the 3. The first thing I'm going to get rid of, that thing. I'm going to add that 2. So add the 2 to the other side. 7 equals 3x over 4. I'm going to write in my steps at the end because I want you to try and think about doing this without having to uh, write everything in. Now I'm going to multiply that 4 across. Well, 4 sevens, that's 28 equals 3x. And then I'm going to get rid of that 3. I'm going to divide. So I'm going to get 28 over 3. Ah, so it hasn't come out as an exact answer. I might just double check that on my calculator. So I go 28 over 3. Oh, this gives me the same answer. Remember, you can hit your SD. It'll give you as a decimal. Or if you hit shift SD, nine and a third. And that's the correct answer. So what did I do? Oh, well, I added two. I times by four. And I divided by three. All right. So now let's move on to the next exercise. Because this is the one where it's going to be most useful for you. Because we use formulas all the time. There are formulas throughout science, maths, everyday life. Everyone uses formulas. Being able to work out how to manipulate a formula or solve a formula when you don't have it written the way you'd like it is very important. So first of all, how do we write a formula? Well, we call, and you don't have to write this down. You can if you want. The subject of the formula, the subject of the formula, is the variable that's by itself. And it's usually on the left-hand side. We tend to write, I don't know, the area equals base times height, or the volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. And that's the subject, the letter that's by itself. So question one, just do it verbally. What do we got? Well, what's the subject of the first one? I. The next one, F. The next one, V. The next one, A, C, P. If you understand that the subject of the formula is the letter that it's by itself and is usually the pronumeral on the left-hand side, pronumeral, letter. Okay. Substitute the values in. Well, you've got to be good at substitution. So, in the first one, so 2A, you just got to put the numbers in, use your calculator. Okay, so they give us F and A and tell us to find M. 
or m equals f on a. Well, what do they say f is? 180. What's a? 3. What's 180 divided by 3? 60. Okay. B. Area equals length times breadth. What's L? 6. What's B? 8. What's 6 times 8? 48. Use your calculator if you're having trouble. Jumping down to E, because you can just do these. Oh, no, I'll do D. V squared equals uh, U squared plus 2AS. What's U? 6. 6 squared. What's A? 12. What's S? 7. Use your calculator. So, 6 squared plus 2 times 12 times 7. 204. Now, that's what V squared equals. I wonder if they want us to find out what V is. And they do. Well, how do I undo squaring? I just square root. I'm going to need my calculator. And the square root of my answer. Whoops. We'll go back. Square root of my answer. 14.28. In the back of the book, they've got 14.3, but we'll go there. Now, here's where you have to make a decision. So, remember, we're doing questions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. Only do as many as you can. So here we go. Three. Here's our formula. V equals U plus AT. That's a formula for velocity. And they want us to find T when they give us V. Well, what does T equal? When V equals 16 u equals 8 and a equals 2. Well, we put them all in. 16 equals 8 plus 2t. Oh, now it's an equation and I just have to solve it. I minus the 8 and that gives me 8 equals 2t and I divide by 2. And I get 4 equals t. Now I could do the same thing for the other values, but you can have a go at that. Let's create a bit of space for myself. It's not letting me get that. Let me get those. Now, in question 4, this is the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. So again, 4. Now all of these are the same. The perimeter equals 2. Well, hold on. It's not the perimeter. They've done this and they've done a different version. Times L plus 2B. And they want me to find B if P equals 60. P equals 60. So find B. What is B? If P equals 60 and L equals 10. Well, you just put them in. 60 equals 2, 10 plus 2B. Well, what are we going to do? Divide by the 2. And that gives me 30. And the brackets can now just go 10 plus 2B. Minus the 10. And 
and that gives me 20 equals 2b. Then divide by the 2, and that gives me 10 equals b. Now all the others will be the same, but they'll just have different numbers. So if I go to the last one, which is d, and this time it says find b if p equals 12.4 and l equals 3.6. Well, I'll put them in. 12.4 equals 2, 3.6 plus 2b. You do the same things. You divide by 2. But because you're dividing by 2, and these are decimals, you probably use your calculator. So 12.4 is 6.2. And remember, when you divide it on the right-hand side, it goes. And we don't need the brackets anymore. 3.6 plus 2b. Now this time, minus 3.6. And again, calculator, so 6.2 six. And now divide by 2. And again, calculator, 2.6 divided by 2. 1.3. So all of these are going to be similar. So, uh, you have a go at them. If you need, if you don't need my help, good luck. Otherwise, here we go. 5A, volume equals length, breadth, height. Find H when V equals 100. L equals 5. That's a terrible L. Let's fix that up. And B equals 4. Got to find H. So, here we go. 100 equals 5 times 4 times H. Well, let's divide by the 5. We'll get rid of the 5. And that'll give us 20 equals 4 times h. And now we'll divide by the 4. And you get 5 equals, oops, I forgot my h, h. All right. The next one will be exactly the same. I'm not going to do them all. I'm just going to do the first one. 6a. Area, this is the area of a triangle, a half base height. Find B when A equals 90. And H equals 12. What's B? Put them in. 90 equals a half B times 12. Well, here we go. What am I going to get rid of first? Well, in this case, this is one time where it doesn't matter. I'm going to multiply that 2 across, or if you like to think, you can divide by a half. Same thing. Dividing by a half and multiplying by 2 are the same thing. Watch, I'll show you. 90 divided by half. 180. Well, that's what 2 times 90 is. Yes, because when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So you could have multiplied that 2 across, or you can divide by half. Anyway, whoops, 180 equals B times 12. How do I get rid of that 12? Divide by 12. And 180 divided by 12. And if you did the next ones, it'd be exactly the same, just different numbers. 
Right arm. Seven. So what about seven here? Ah, the formula for the area of a trapezium. Area equals H on two, A plus B. What do they want us to find? They want us to find H. What's H? When A equals 20, little a equals four, and H equals one. So I've got 20 equals one on two, four plus B. Hold on, that's a B, B equals one. Sorry, made a mistake of that. I've got to find H, so my H is there, and four plus one. All right, well, this time we're just gonna do a quick little thing first. I'm gonna do what's inside the brackets. H on two, four plus one is five. So what am I gonna do? First thing, I wanna multiply that two across. All right, you can multiply that two across. It's been divided, so times by two, times by two, that gives me 40, equals H. Now the brackets are gone. Well, that's H times five. How do I get rid of that times? I divide by five, and that'll give me eight. Okay, if you've done as many of these, that should be just about enough. But keep going if you're getting it and you're pretty good at it and you want to try and improve. Ah, here's Einstein. So 8, E equals M, C squared. And they find M if E is 100 and C equals 5. Okay, we'll put the 100 in for the E. 100 equals M times 5 squared. Well, we better square that 5 first. 100 equals M. Well, 5 squared, that's 25. Well, how do I get rid of times in by 25? Divide by 25. Divide by 25. And you get 4. Come on. 4 equals M. Uh, look, all of these are very similar. Oh, what am I to? I'll do nine. V equals, this is the volume of a cylinder, pi r squared times height. And find H, and we've got to go to one decimal place this time, if V equals 100 and R equals 3. So 100 equals pi times 3 squared times h. Well, let's do that squared bit first. 100 equals pi times 9 times h. Now, if you're really smart, you can, you can do this whole thing in one more step. But I'm going to do it in two. But I'm going to show you what the one step would be. It would be to divide by 9 and divide by pi at the same time. So if you divided by 9 pi and divided by 9 pi, and that would get rid of the 9 and the pi. If that's too confusing for you, let's just get rid of that pi first. Well, let's get rid of the 9. Because, oh, no, we'll get rid of the pi first. So 100 divided by pi. So remember how to get pi? Shift and down here. Now, you need to leave that in your answer bank because it's a long decimal. So you get 30. Oh, come on. 31 point, and it goes on and on and on. And I've got 9H. Now, I divide by 9, and I divide by 9. So I get H equals, I go to my calculator, so that's already my answer. So if I just press divided by, it takes that answer, 9, and I get 3.53, on and on and on. It says to go to one decimal place, so I just look down here. Is that number behind that five or more? No, so the answer is going to be 3.5 equals H. Righto. Uh, I 
What question was that? I've messed that up because I got 5.7. Have I put something wrong in there? Oh, no, I might. No, I'm. They got 5.7. Have I done something wrong? 100. Oh, it's 160. All right. So if I put 60 in, let's go back and see if I get the right answer. And let's get rid of these. So, go to my calculator. 160 divided by pi, 50.9. So I get 50.9. 50.9. And then if I take that answer and I divide by 9, Yes, I get 5.7. So 5.65 dot, dot, dot. Look at that number directly behind. Is it five or more? I get 5.7. So all of these are the same. Okay. Uh, you have a go at them. And if you have any problems, send me an email.